We got some very candid commentary on Kentucky's basketball roster from none other than Kirk Creasa yesterday. Uh, shout out to, I think this was like all the KSR guys who were pulling a lot of these clips, but um, it seems there were, there were like real interview settings yesterday. Yeah, there's like KSR on uh, the On3 site. And Tristan Ferris had, the, I believe, the first video clip of this. But Kirk Risa was asked some things about the Kentucky roster and who's been impressing him. And he singled out Lamont Butler. That's interesting, not just because it's interesting, but it's interesting because Kirk Reese and Lamont Butler presumably play the same position here, and both are point guards, and there's been speculation, we've speculated in the last week, can they both play together, can they both start, I think they could both play together, but roster wise, if you're playing both these guys at the same time, then you've got Kobe Brea, Otega Owe, and Jackson Robinson, one of those guys, is on the bench. I think all three of those guys are starter-level players. So anyways, a lot of cooks in the kitchen is the point. When uh, Kentucky basketball played the scrimmage against their TBT team, I mean, we saw the footage of it. It was Jackson Robinson, and it was Kirk Risa. Kirk Risa was arguably the best player, if not the most dynamic offensive player on the floor. His pick and roll stuff was special. His vision, he's hitting step back threes. He just looked like a stud so much so that we, we kind of put our skepticism aside and we're like, Kerr might be the guy on this team. And maybe that's a good thing. Well, if you ask Kerr who the guy is on this team, Kerr will tell you it's Lamont Butler. Uh, his quotes yesterday are this. Mont is our PG one. He's going to set the tone for us the whole season. He's going to be the guy for us. He's been very special for the group. So that is point guard Kirk Risa saying point guard Lamont Butler is point guard one and the guy for Kentucky. What's your interpretation of this quote? And is this good or bad for Kentucky? Uh, So I'm going to summarize it, I think, first off, until you talk me out of it, is that honestly, I look at this as like, Kirk Kreese has been, and he is, I think the stat was he started 93 out of 99 games in his college career, right? Like he's, he's been a starter. He's played on tournament teams. He's played on not non-tournament teams, but he has always been a staple of starter for basketball teams his whole career. Um, To me, this is actually a sign of maturity, I think, from Kirk Kreese. I think that Kerr kind of realizes that like Mont is, Monty is the like he's the point guard. Lamont Butler is the point guard. He's a PG one. Um, whatever that means for him, I'm sure his role is still gonna be his role. And I I think that this might be a sign of Kerr, just like showing some maturity, being at Kentucky, knowing that he wants to win. Like this is probably his last go around in college. Um, so I see it as like a respect and a maturity thing. And I'm ready for you to push back and tell me this is this is not good. I have no pushback on it. it's a respect and maturity thing. I think there's a lot of good in these comments. And yeah, I also do have a little like maybe basketball wise that scares me. But like, let's start with all of the good in this. Um, number one, Kirk Kreese is electric. I want to I want to just begin with that. We've known he's electric. He's a great quote. He's entertaining. You, right? you didn't even you didn't even say my favorite quote from this. The, the Duke quote. No, that, okay, that was good too. But like, they asked him about the on court like trash talking stuff, and oh, he yeah. goes, "I mean, like as a six two guard, like looks around the room, like looking around to see if anyone's around." Basically, he's like, "I mean, you gotta have some shit to your game." Yeah, I'm like, oh, "Yeah, I love that." He's not wrong. There's a reason you and I years ago fell in love with Kirk Risa. Like Arizona's team when Kerr was what a sophomore that had Tubelis and Balo and. Pella Larson and uh, Ben Matherin and Kerr like that. That team was our favorite team in the country. We fell in love with them the way we fell in love with anyone. And Kerr was a big part of it. He plays with a swagger. He carries himself with a confidence and just a, a, a likability factor that, you know, whether he's a villain to you as a basketball fan or not, like you have to admit it's fun to watch and it's entertaining and you enjoy it. Um, he also like this whole interview, there's so much gold in this. He uh, was asked about like big blue nation. And he was like, it's freaking Kentucky. Like it's not Duke. It's Kentucky. It's different. So this dude's going to be um, like, he's built to put on the Kentucky uniform. And 
not only is Kurt electric in front of a microphone, he's also an insane person. And yeah. uh, like he truly to his core, I think Kerr is like a lunatic. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I mean, like he, his brash confidence, the way he interprets everything and the way he plays. It's just all he's an insane person. I would compare it to the only other quote unquote insane person that I've watched in college basketball in the last few years, Carter. Hunter Dickinson was an insane person. And then Hunter Dickinson, the insane person who podcasted and criticized his teammates and all that nonsense, went to Kansas, a blue blood, one of the best programs in the country. And all of a sudden, Hunter Dickinson started acting a little sane. Did you notice that last year? Ah, did, did you pick up on that? A little bit, yeah. So maybe Kerr Creasa in blue blood form, maybe he's starting to act a little sane here. Maybe like, like rather than spout off about how he's the guy and all that, it's just like selfless teammate. Like, yeah, the, the one guy I'm competing with is actually the star here. Um, I'm sure it's good for the locker room. I think you're right. It's a sign of maturity, but I don't think it's like a coincidental sign of maturity. I don't think Kerr drops a quote like this at Arizona. I think Kerr drops a quote like this at Kentucky because he needs to. Okay. I think I'm back out. Why? I'm just, I'm thinking I'm out on maturity. Because now you got me thinking, reminiscing about the times I fell in love with Kerr. I I I love I love the Kerr crease that sends DMs to Greg Waddell. Like you got me effed up. I don't yeah. know if I like this one. Yeah, we should be clear. There was an exchange between me and Kerr, who at the time was one of my favorite players in the country. But I just it was such an up and down, man. The swings at Arizona that year, before I ended up picking them to win the national title in like February, they had a meltdown. And I I was on Field of 68 after dark, and I just said point blank, listen, I can never trust a team that has Kirk Reese to win a national title. I just can't do it. And he somehow saw it and he DM'd me and he said, We'll see. I'm like, okay, let's go. So uh yeah, that won me back over. I'm like, oh, he's a dog, he's gonna get us there. And then we all know what happened in the tournament. He was afraid to shoot with four minutes left, and they lose to Prince in the first round. So I don't know what to do with Kerr. I love him. I root for him. I do think he's genuinely insane, and this is a uh, sign of maturity and saneness. Now here's the basketball side of this. Yeah, thing. let's do let's do this part. Here's here's the basketball side of this that is frustrating to me, and uh, we probably should have let Brian Ralph get his bars off on this because I want to make it clear. A member of our channel, Sleepers Media, Brian Ralph is so in the opposite camp on this than you and I are. Like, if Brian Ralph were here, he would go to war against me and defend how this is a great thing for the basketball side of the Kentucky basketball team. Here's where I'm coming from on Lamont Butler. Lamont Butler is not as good of a point guard as Kirk Reese. He's He's just not, at least offensively. And Lamont Butler may be the best perimeter defender in the country. He is. But... This is giving vibes to to go back to your team. Kentucky people aren't even going to know who this is, Cart. This is Kalen Lucas versus Travis Walton. This is Cassius Winston versus Tum Tum Nairn. Stop. This, like, how, how much more can I say it, right? There's a guy who's extremely limited offensively, who's your leader, your glue guy, your grit and grind, your defense, your toughness. That's Lamont Butler. That's awesome. He's important to the team. He's going to play a bunch of minutes. I agree with that. And then there's Kirk Creesa, who we have visual evidence of being the best offensive player here, other than Jackson. And Kerr has been a great offensive player. At his time at Arizona, he shot a bunch of threes. He made them at a high clip. He's a great passer. He just needs to rein in the turnovers. But like he can be an offensive engine on a team that wins 30 games. We know that. Lamont Butler has been on great teams. He can't be an offensive engine. That's not who he is. Lamont Butler has never scored 10 points a game. Lamont Butler has never averaged more than 3.2 assists. Like, it's just not who he is. He is a a role-playing elite defender who started a bazillion games for good San Diego State teams, was all-conference defensively. That's fine. That's it. Like, and if he is... A starter on this team, that's great. Like, if we're referring to Lamont Butler as, like, you know, a key member of the team and it's him and Kerr together, great. That's not how I interpreted this quote. How I interpreted this quote is Kerr being like, yeah, I'm not the point guard at all. That That's our point guard. 
And I don't know what that mental mind game is, but like, in my opinion, you want Kerr Creason to be the point guard. You just want Kerr to be good. If you're telling me Kentucky's star next season in the backcourt is Lamont Butler, like the good San Diego State teams didn't even consider Lamont Butler their PG1 or their star. That's not what they did. Matt Bradley was the star. Like last year, Reese Dixon Waters averaged more points a game than him. So, and I get Kentucky fans want to point. I, like I had somebody in my mentions being like, you mean the guy that went to two final fours? My response was, are we inventing final fours now? He went to one and he was great in the one as a role player, not as a PG one. So maybe this is just off season speak, but uh, if we're, taking Kerr to be honest and literal in his comments. And Lamont Butler is the best point guard on this team. No, I do not think that's a good thing for Kentucky's basketball team. I think you need Kirk Reeson to be in that role. Yeah. And honestly, like just on a personal level for each player, like I think it, it Lamont Butler being like the bench second unit PG, I think fits his game better than being the starting PG, to be honest. Like, I think it's a great change of pace from Kerr. I think that if you really wanted to, you could play them together. But if I'm making a bullet point list of reasons that I think Kentucky can reach their ceiling, one of those points is that Kerr creases PG1, not Lamont Butler. Yeah. And like the year that San Diego State went to the title game, like they were obviously very good. Lamont Butler was PG3. Darian Trammell was the point guard. Matt Bradley was the second best guard with the ball in his hands constantly. So like, like that, that's the role. If you're, if you're a good team, that's the role. And maybe we're overreacting to the comment. Maybe Kerr thinks he's going to start next to Lamont Butler and play shooting guard. You could sell me on that. Like Lamont Butler brings the ball up. He's our leader. And then Kerr just shoots nine threes a game at the two. Like I, I, I trust Mark Pope to figure it out, but I would want Kerr. With all due respect, if I'm a Kentucky fan, I would want Kerr approaching this season wanting to be the PG1 on this team and take Kentucky to greatness. And the fact that we're sitting here in July, a week after Kerr was the best player in the film, and Kerr's talking about, yeah, I'm I'm not the guy. There's another guy. That's selfless. It's mature. It's not what I'd want to hear from the guy that I think is the most dynamic guard on the roster offensively. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, like I said, I appreciate the maturity, Kerr, but nah, no, thank you. Carr, you know what I love about you? That I'm handsome? You're reliable. I can count on you. You know, honestly, you remind me of Aaron Henry a little bit. Remember when, like, you know, their back was against the wall, nothing was going right, and man just showed up every day. He didn't make excuses. There were no problems. There were just solutions. Sounds like me. That's you. And it also reminds me of Duncan Mechanical Solutions, because if you're looking for quality furnace repair, look no further than the heating and air experts that you can trust. Comfort and quality are their standard. They're an HVAC company that serves Northeast Indiana and Southern Michigan. Whether it's heating and air conditioning, plumbing, kitchen and bath remodeling, or emergency services when you need them most, Duncan Mechanical Solutions has reliable service that you can count on. Car, remember when your basement almost exploded? I remember when my basement almost exploded. I remember when my my furnace itself was acting funny. I remember when my AC was acting funny. I wish I had Duncan in my back pocket. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I've never been anywhere in northern Indiana or southern Michigan that hasn't been perfectly cool or perfectly warm, depending on when the day called for and that's because of duncan mechanical solutions uh they are the presenting sponsor for the month of july shout out to duncan mechanical solutions go to duncan mechanical solutions.com to learn more